So, who is the best? Uh, this is a question that gets thrown around a lot in terms of, well, I mean, everything. The best sports team, the best athlete, uh, best musician, uh, you name it. This idea of the best is thrown around a lot. Even when we talk about history, talk about countries, all those kind of things. And we think about it, that question of who is the best, a lot of times our own biases tend to creep in there a little bit. You know, we're thinking, well, who's the best? Well, my person's the best, obviously. You know what I mean? So big question is this. What kind of criteria can we use to measure who's the best, especially looking at various countries around the world as we look at them throughout history? Okay, good question. Why are we talking about this? I want you guys to be able to figure out and analyze countries and, del and develop some questions from that data. Uh, I kind of just want to see how the world is now, and as we study world history, figure out, you know, how the heck do we actually get here? So what we're going to do today uh, in this lecture is look at uh, get the ability to analyze data, learn what kind of different data terms are, and then in class, we'll actually be, in class, we'll be analyzing that uh, different countries using that data and then hopefully developing questions from that data as well. Now, factors we'll be looking at. Population, uh, if it's getting more, getting less, the kind of government they have, which we'll talk about in class, economics, natural resources, and literacy we'll be analyzing for this whole uh, kind of activity we're doing here. So let's start with population, okay? Now, first off, tell what population means. Obviously, just how many people live in that country, right? The big question is, is your population growing or is it shrinking? And so we look at population growth is simply the difference between number of people being born, number of people dying, divided by 100. That tells you just, you know, by what percentage your population is growing. And so that's kind of where that whole, that whole idea comes from. Now, obviously, there's one big wild card here. And that is the idea of immigration, uh, kind of the idea that, um, you know, how many people are coming from your country into your country that didn't start out there. You know, it's in the news a lot in the United States regarding immigration from Central America and Mexico, different kind of places. And it's a big issue in Europe, too, with immigration coming from uh, North Africa, the Middle East, other places like that. Now, obviously, looking at, uh, you know, population, there's some other, num other numbers we can look at as well. Look at the birth rate. Basically, for every 100 people, how many babies are being born? You know, some countries that's really high, some countries that's actually pretty low, believe it or not. We also have our mortality. So for every 100 people you have, what's the number that are passing away? Uh, if we want to simply take our population growth, really, really easy. You take your birth rate minus your birth rate, which is right here, okay, uh, minus your mortality, your death rate. That tells you just how, what, what, what the percentage of people are truly being born within your country. Um, now, things play, a few things play a big role in this. One of the biggest ones, obviously, is health care and sanitation. Uh, we'll talk more about this in class, but, you know, getting sick, that was what a big role that plays in everything here. Think about that. We read the Ebola virus and kind of why it's being spread or why things happen. You know, that plays a big role in terms of, you know, what kind of diseases in, impact your country. Last year in U.S. history, you talked about the, the flu of, 18, of 1918. Uh, that plays a big role as well. And with healthcare and sanitation comes the idea of an industrialized country versus a developing world. You know, what kind of things do you have available to you in your country? Uh, what kind of health care is available to you? All those things play a big role in the idea of population and how fast uh, those two numbers go. They really, really impact uh, the number of infant mortality. Essentially, it's out of every, every 100 babies that are born, how many die? You know, some countries, you'd be surprised to see how high that rate is just due to lack of medical care and uh, more advanced information. Uh, we also have a, more, a, a, a number called morbidity, which is basically how many individuals are in poor health out of every 100 people. And you kind of tell that health care and sanitation plays a big role there. Now, another thing looked at is the idea of life expectancy, which is how long does the average person usually live in a country? Um, usually, uh, they always have numbers divided between men and women for this. You can kind of see, you know, just, you know, you know what, what is the difference between that and maybe why are those differences there? In a lot of countries, uh, at least in the United States, women live longer than men. You know, there's different, different theories and ideas as to why that happens. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, what factors might impact the idea of life expectancy. We'll talk about that more in class, guys, okay? One of the ways we measure this is with something called a population pyramid. Um, you go to the population pyramid here, you can see the information on it. One side is for males, one side is for females. Each little bar represents a certain age bracket uh, within, uh, within that country. So here you kind of see the young dependents. So, you know, under the age of 19, where, you know, you're pretty dependent on your parents at that point. You're economically active between the ages of, say, 20 and 60 when you're a working person. And after 60, you're more dependent on things again. So you kind of, you start in diapers, you get old work, and then you, and then diapers sometimes too. It's, it's kind of one of the old jokes kind of goes. Um, 
but let's kind of see how this, how this works there. Now, the shape of the pyramid tells you uh, just what's happening in terms of, of that country. If you have a, long, a lot of bar, longer bars up here of 80, 90 plus, that tells you, hey, pretty low death rate and very high life expectancy. If these bars are very, very short, it should tell you a pretty high death rate and a shorter life expectancy. It also tells you just how fast countries are growing. Okay, So here you have uh, this pyramid here shows the idea of rapid growth. Uh, so you see a lot of babies being born, but also see a pretty short life expectancy up here. Not a lot of people last to 80, 90, um, but you see a lot of p babies being born. And as these guys get older into that economically active time, they're going to have kids and have kids, and you might see this country's population shoot up due to this rapid growth. Over here you see slower growth, okay? Uh, same kind of shape, but much shorter on the bottom here, a little bit of a narrower base to it. Kind of shows just how uh, growth is happening within this pyramid here. Over here, you see zero growth. And I think, why is it zero growth? Well, look, see the number of kids being born, okay, kind of is, you know, straight all the way up here. You know, it's about the same. As people are dying off, you know, people are basically being replaced one for one. And so you have zero natural growth happening here. And over here, we see a much longer lifespan up here, but less kids are being born. And so you actually see a negative growth here that, you know, that as, people pass, as people live longer, they're having less kids, and maybe the population of that country is going to naturally decrease. Uh, here's some examples. You can kind of see Congo here. We'll talk about these in class a little bit. You know, can you kind of guess what each of these are? So you are probably looking at Congo here. Kind of think to yourself, what is this one going to be? Okay. We have United States. You know, what might this one here be possibly, we think? Lastly, well, we have, you know, uh, Germany here. So you see Republic of Congo being rapid growth because, you know, a lot of kids are being born. United States, very slow growth. We see, you know, people are passing way up here, and it's just barely maybe, maybe a two-to-one Versus, you know, the four or five to one you have over here, replacement of every person that passes to every person that's born. And lastly, we have that negative growth over here in Germany. You see a lot more people uh, living longer up here than you see uh, being born down here. And that's actually negative growth in Germany. And a lot of factors go into this. Uh, disease is a big one, okay? Uh, diseases, you know, obviously make people sick, pass away, those kind of things. Technology to help fight those diseases. What kind of hospital technology do you have? Uh, sanitation is a big part of it, too. Think about it, you don't have good sanitation, diseases get spread and cause a lot of problems. Um, wars are a big factor. Obviously, in wars, uh, people die. And so countries that are very war-torn have uh, a lot of problems happening. It causes a big problem for uh, that, those uh, factors there. Money is a big part of it, too. Can you afford health care? Can you afford medicines, new technology to help people live longer? Even the culture plays a big role in it. There are certain places where, you know, people just don't want to have kids right now. And so the culture plays a big role in there, too. Another factor you look at is, is that population density. So basically, how many people are in every square mile or square kilometer? And here's a population density map of the United States. You can see you know, just how densely populated certain parts of the country are and how not densely populated other parts of the country are. Anyway, as you cram people together, it has more problems. If you have more people in a small area, there's less jobs, less money, less resources. And so people may, you know, you see more problems creep up than things like crime, violence, uh, do those things that are lacking. We'll talk more about that in class a little bit too, guys. Now, the question is too, is how can we measure an economy, all right? How can we figure out what an economy looks like and how much money a country actually has? Uh, so one of the things we look at is the idea of gross domestic product, okay? GDP, we'll talk about this a lot. And GDP is simply the value of all things made within a country's borders. Now, that's both goods, which are actual physical things, and services, things that people do for other people, all right? A good is going to be a physical thing that's made and used up. A bicycle is a good. A desk is a good. A pencil is a good. Services are something that someone does for somebody else. Teaching is a service. Being a doctor is a service. Um, you know, uh, working at McDonald's is a service, okay? The person that cooks that burger, uh, gets to you, those kind of things, that service, the actual burger itself might be a good. So for GDP, uh, gross domestic product, we measure the value of all those goods and services produced within a country's borders. So every single good and service within the U.S. Uh, border counts towards the GDP. Now, gross national product is a little bit different, okay? That measures the value of all goods by companies headquartered in a country. So they Nike, okay? Nike has factories all over the world, but the value of all the goods that Nike makes goes into the United States GNP. And so we'll talk about that more in class as well. Now, these things are measured usually in either billions or trillions of dollars. And we'll talk about what that, that looks like, but there's a lot of money we're talking about here, okay? And we also take these numbers and measure them per capita. Per capita means the amount 
per every for every person in a country. So you know, there are you know, there are approximately you know, 314, 317 million people in the United States. You know, if our GDP is say 15 trillion dollars, we divide you know, that 15 trillion by our 314 million. Figure out how much are we making for every person in the country. I want you guys to think to yourself, why is this so important in analyzing a country? You know, think about goes into those other factors of population, those kind of things. Uh, you may have heard different these ideas of levels of, of economies, okay? First world, second world, third world. And a lot of people put the United States in that first world, first world thing. Think about this. What is China? What, what, what might India be? You know, maybe we know now. Maybe we don't. We probably will. And actually, instead of using first, second, and third world, I'd rather use a different terms for it, okay? I want you to think about primary economies. A primary economy is a country that is involved in gathering raw materials, okay, wood, lumber, mining, diamonds, gold, those kind of things. The stuff you get to make other stuff. A lot of countries in Africa right now are involved in that, farming for chocolate, uh, coffee, those kind of things, where it's been sent somewhere else and made into something different. You have your secondary countries, manufacturing. You take those raw materials and you make stuff out of them. Uh, China is a huge manufacturing country right now. Think about all the things that are made in China. The iPad or the computer you're making, you're watching design right now, was probably made somewhere else. And uh, it could be made in China. You know, they take all those raw materials, the plastic, metal, those kind of things, and make that good out of it. You also have tertiary countries, okay? Uh, they're more about professional services, business, teaching, doctors, consulting, those kind of things. Uh, you see, look at India, look at the United States, is a big part of that there, okay? You also have cautionary as well. That's the idea of information. So basically, you're dealing in information, in ideas, uh, those kind of things. The United States is huge in that. Uh, Japan is huge in research, where the companies come from. Uh, think about Sony and all those other companies that um, are involved in making and designing and researching new things. Okay? Now, one thing countries do to help us out is the idea of infrastructure, is that uh, countries or nation states, they build things to help facilitate the economy. They build things to help them out. Roads, railroads, airports, electric lines, all those kind of things play a big role in this to make sure that these things can happen. And so infrastructure does play a big role in that. Even some countries will even fund uh, companies to help make new stuff. And so it plays a big role in there as well. But that's what I'll talk about real quick is natural resources. Natural resource simply, you know, something comes from nature that we use, okay? Natural things with economic value. Uh, think about what your house is made out of. Wood, metal, those kind of things. Now think about it. These are very important for a country because we can harvest them, make money, make things out of them, and get jobs out of that as well. At one point, Wisconsin was a huge lumber company uh, uh, state. All kinds of people came here to log and get lumber. Uh, Wisconsin also had a huge mining industry at one point as well. Those natural resources help fuel the economy. Now, what happens when we run out of them? That's a problem, right? You have to switch to something different. You run on natural resources, you switch to manufacturing, switch to information. Uh, we'll talk about why natural resources are important, though, as well. Um, some natural resources are renewable, replace, replace naturally, you know, uh, trees, fishing, seafood, those kind of things. You might need help or maybe some, uh, you know, restrictions to make sure they can, that, that, that does happen. But, you know, some resources are renewable. Some things aren't renewable, okay? Minerals, iron, gold. You know, when they're gone, they're gone. We have nothing left. Uh, people talk a lot about petroleum. You know, obviously petroleum is a fossil fuel made from decaying critters that died. Uh, is it non-renewable? Well, it takes a long time to make, so it's like kind of a little debate about that. You know, certain things are never going to run out, okay? Solar power. Until the sun goes supernova, we're always going to have one. Wind. It should work, you know what I mean? Um, you know, geothermal uh, energy, that kind of stuff, we should always have it. So, you know, some things are renewable, some things aren't renewable. Last thing real quick is literacy. And you hear this word a lot around here, school this year, about literacy and making sure to read and write. And literacy is simply defined as measuring if you can code and decode. Can you read words and can you write words on a page? Um, you know, when we look at a literacy rate in a country, literacy rates usually aren't measured. Now, we think about literacy right here being, you know, can you read, write, and can you understand? And that's what we work a lot about, um, you know, here in school this year. And when you think about teachers, you know, saying kind of books we read, want you guys to read all these books, those kind of things, help practice that and get better at it. Now, before uh, we talk about this on Thursday, think about this. What does a high literacy rate tell you about a country, okay? And lastly, what, li what factors could limit literacy in a country as well? Guys, please think about this. Have your notes ready for Thursday in class. We'll talk about them then and do a little activity starting Friday. We're we'll start analyzing some countries. Thanks a lot for listening, guys. I'll see you guys in class. Thank you very much.